Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. And welcome to episode two of my new series, Your VR Questions Answered. The idea of this video series is to answer common questions that people ask me in order to help everyone else who may have the same questions as well. And now for the first question. Is the Quest 2 a good VR headset for Microsoft Flight Simulator? This is one of the most common questions I get from people in terms of what kind of headset they should buy. A lot of people have already bought the uh, Quest 2 because they're more general users and they like the idea of having it wireless, which is totally fair enough. Actually, I bought the Quest 2 as my first headset for the simulator and I'm glad I did. If someone would have asked me that question nine months ago, I may have said, wait or buy a different headset because the setup with the Quest 2 originally was so difficult. We had so many teething problems with so many different types of things. It was um, really hard going. But if someone asked me now about the Quest 2, I would definitely recommend getting it as a headset. Because it's had so many updates, it seems to manage the simulator much better. So if I were to use my Quest 2 now, I would simply plug it in and it would work. Whereas nine months ago, it would be at least an hour trying to get it going. And then hopefully it would keep going if, once you get it started. Whereas now it really does work smoothly. And I can't really think of anything negative to say about the Quest 2 at the moment. The whole advertisement thing is another story, which I won't go into. But in terms of using the headset for the simulator, I would definitely recommend it as an alternative. And question number two, how can I improve VR performance on my PC? So as many of you already know, my channel focuses on technical issues with VR and the simulator. So please have a look at my videos and hopefully they'll help you get yourselves dialed in with whichever system you have. In terms of basics of getting good performance on your PC, I'd always recommend that you install the simulator onto the primary drive. So it's usually a C drive um, and also use an SSD if possible. So it reads and writes and runs the simulator much better that way. I'd always use a wired internet rather than Wi-Fi because a lot of the data that's coming in that you're streaming is going to affect the performance of the simulator in games. So a fast internet speed is also important in terms of getting that data into the simulator as you're flying. I would always recommend people to spend time in the settings and check out the tutorials that people have posted online. My main objective when setting up a system is not just sticking with numbers because VR is slightly different, but I would try and aim to get around 30 frames per second without motion reprojection if possible. That should give you a good experience in VR in terms of movement and stuttering and the way that you manipulate the aircraft. Another basic tip is don't have too many mods in the community folder at once as this can slow down the system, especially large ones. I noticed that if I've got too many loaded in, I'll just have a rethink and think about what I really want for a specific flight if I need to. I'm not one to download mods every five minutes, but it is interesting to use them in different places and at different times in the simulator. Another basic tip if you are just starting out in VR is make sure the VR headset is working properly before attempting to use it in the sim. So go to the basic software, make sure it runs really well on the computer, make sure you've got the settings how you want them in terms of the resolution, and then go in and start messing around with the in-game settings. That way you know the problems aren't coming from the VR headset as such, and it obviously is rated to the simulator if you do get problems running the sim rather than anything else. So it's kind of like a problem solving, troubleshooting exercise, but I don't foresee many problems with people getting started in VR because of all the updates that have been happening over the last sort of nine, 10 months. And this leads on to the next question. What resources are available for VR simmers? The first point of call I'm always going to recommend is obviously my channel, Pie in the Sky Tours. Uh, like I said earlier, I do a lot of technical videos, a lot of performance testing. I've also done some reviews of products that are VR related. And you may have noticed I've been asking your feedback in the community tab, which is really useful for me to make future content. And then there's obviously the official forum. I do tend to get information from that. There's a really good Facebook group called Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 Virtual Reality. I really recommend join that if you have not already, because there's lots of people in there, great community. People are really friendly, really helpful, and they post lots of interesting things. So I'm really pleased to be a part of that. So I'd always recommend that as a resource. Also, please join my Discord channel because that's a place where we can talk about things technical or otherwise. And there are numerous YouTubers that help with VR around everything Microsoft Flight Simulator. Also, be sure to check out the recent development update from July 15th. You can see a screenshot here. It's definitely worth having a look into that as it'll give you all the latest updates and developments for the simulator. And on to question number four. What are some advantages of flying in VR? Now I've covered this in a few of my latest videos because people have been asking me about making that jump into VR. 
my main reason for VR, and I think a lot of you would agree with this based on your comments, is the fact that it's just so much more immersive. You really get the feeling of sitting in the cockpit, flying a plane, and you're looking left, right, up, down, behind you, in front of you, everywhere, and you're surrounded by this virtual world, this unbeatable in terms of immersion, in my opinion. There's no need for expensive monitors or screens. Uh, you get a much better perception of space and distance, and it just feels more natural. You can really feel the atmosphere in terms of the weather and the locations. I've mentioned this before, but sometimes I put my aircon on really strong just to get the feeling of like I'm flying at high altitudes and I'm a bit cold. Things like that, or I put a fan near me when I'm in VR so I can feel a bit of wind on me. It's just all playing with the senses, I guess, but it just helps get that real atmosphere that you're after in VR. So those are really are the main advantages for me in terms of why I fly in VR. And that brings us to our final question. What are some disadvantages of flying in VR? So the major disadvantage of flying in VR right now, I would say, is that it's not yet fully developed or optimized and is nowhere near that of the PC mode. It's just the fact that it's so unreliable. Some people have it running really well and they're really happy with the results, whereas other people are really struggling to get it running reliably. But like I mentioned in my last video, update five should help solve a lot of those issues. And hopefully I'll be able to say that VR is stable and definitely worth getting into at this point. Another disadvantage would be recording VR gameplay is incredibly difficult. You've probably heard other YouTubers mention this, but recording VR is not an easy task. I'm hoping for an updated mirror for the Windows Mixed Reality, similar to that of the Oculus one, because it gives you much better resolution to record the screen with. But I'd say that's more of a disadvantage for content creators like myself or anyone else who wants to record the footage in VR as true to native resolution as possible. So that just about wraps it up for episode two. I hope discussing these questions helps you in some way. Please take some time to write some more questions in the comment section below or any feedback that you have based on what I've been talking about. I appreciate we've all got different points of view, but I just like to share my thoughts and hopefully help others. As always, guys, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't and you like the content, please like and subscribe. I also just wanted to mention that there's an Orbix sale on on the marketplace in the simulator at the moment. So there's some good deals going on for some great scenery and airports there. Anyway, guys, I look forward to making the next video for you soon. In the meantime, take care and stay safe.